Greetings and welcome to Utique Lifestyle. This is a wardrobe planning series in collaboration with So Much Fabric, where fabric is sewn into fashion. In this video, I'm going to show the process of how I sewed my shirred blouse. Here you can see that I used the shirring technique along the back and the front shoulder. Before I started the project, I did practice some shirring techniques. Since elastic was not readily available during this time, I did find some really old elastic thread and it just didn't work well because it was worn and the quality was compromised. So I decided on hand shirring. And I really liked how it turned out and how the gathers were a lot tighter. I did play around with it to get some different designs. This was also when I learned that I needed five and a half inches length in fabric to get one inch shirt fabric. To create the shirt blouse, I used Vogue Pattern 8772, mainly for the shoulder and the neck bands. And I also used a ready to wear blouse because of the loose fit. I had used this pattern to sew my sleeveless chambray blouse and also my classic white blouse. So here I laid out the pattern on the fold and then pinned. This is my loose ready to wear blouse and I'm just going to fold it in half and lay it on top. So basically I'm tracing it along the shoulder armhole and then along the sides and hem. Along the sides I'm going to mark 5 8 of an inch for the seam allowance and also for the hem. Since I did modify the shoulder width for the chambray blouse, I'm just going to add in the seam allowance here and use that pattern. Now I am ready to cut along the markings and then unpin and open it up. I will use the same general process for the back side. I will use this pattern to create the neckband as well. However, I will square off the ends and change it to half an inch wide and half an inch seam allowance. Now I'm creating the sewing pattern piece for the shirred section of the blouse. I am going to cut the section where I want the shirring to be placed. I will go in more detail when we get to the fashion fabrics. Here are some of the general changes that I have made and shared during my IG Live sessions. A little bit because I want the lines to go straight this way. So lesson learned from this project is that, that I have to do two separate panels if I want it that way. So one would be lining up, you know, the lines would be going this way and the other one would be straight across. And what I decided to do was because I wanted evenly spaced from the seam, I started, you can see here, I drew lines a half inch um, away from the seam and you know, got to a point where it kind of matches the size. I am going to use this and create another pattern. So now I know how many lines I need across this way. So I also did it to the back here. So I know how many shirring lines that I need to Yes, create. Roz was looking at this and was saying something is not settling with her eye. And I agree. I'm going to make some changes. The, the slit is going to be in the front rather than the back. So I'll go in more details with the changes made during the fashion fabric stage. So let's get started. The first thing I did was I opened up the fabric and laid it out. This is the back side of the blouse and I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine lines to shirt the fabric. So I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm going to sew nine straight lines across using the widest stitch. Before I started stitching, I did have about a two to three inches of thread tail. Since the shirring lines were half an inch apart, I also used a seam allowance of half an inch. When I get to the end, I also make sure I leave about two to three inches of a thread tail. On my machine, I place the edge of the foot along the first stitch and move the needle all the way to the left, and that was half an inch and I would continue lining up the edge of the sewing foot with the stitch line. I sewed nine rows of stitches that I needed and I did sew an additional three just to give a little bit of room for error. Now I'm going to cut along the top line to get the first shirring piece. And now you'll be able to see the thread tails at the end more clearly. I will take the first top thread and start pulling on it and just be very careful and take your time and just start shirring the fabric and pushing the fabric towards the center. As I got comfortable, I took several threads at the same time and started shirring the fabric. 
And anytime I noticed any loose shirring, I would go to that row and start pulling on the thread. Once it was gathered towards the center, I would move to the other side and pull on the top thread and start gathering it towards the center as well. When I did this, I noticed the other end would start curling up, so I placed a weight on the other end and continued to shirr the fabric, pushing it towards the center. Once it was tightly shirred, I took it to the ironing board and pressed. I did do a test spot at first, so I'm very comfortable about placing the iron directly onto the fabric. This basically ironed the fabric in place. Using this shirred fabric as a template, I'm going to cut another piece the exact same width. For the front bodice pieces, I needed the width that would cover six stitching rows, and I added three rows just to cover any room for error. So this width of fabric covered nine rows of stitches. Since I got the first piece shirred, I am going to repeat the process for the other pieces. So I will stitch in straight lines with the rows half inch apart, and then I am going to take the top thread and start pulling and gathering it towards the center. And then repeat the process for the other shirring fabric pieces. I also took the time to thread trace all the shirred lines to secure the stitches. To sew together the shirred back, I'm going to use the two wider shirred pieces. And with the right sides of the fabric facing each other, I'm going to match up the lines and then pin. I will then sew it down the center. I will open it up and iron, trim the seam. I centered the pattern and matching up the lines, I would pin it and then thread trace all the way around. Once I'm complete with this side, I'm going to unpin the pattern and then flip it to the other side. Pin and thread trace. After thread tracing by hand, I'm going to take it to the machine and do a zigzag stitch and follow the thread tracing lines. Next, I'm going to cut along the outside of the zigzag stitch. And now I have the upper back bodice piece. For the front shoulder piece, I use the same general process as I did for the back. I laid out the pattern, matched up the lines, and then pin. I thread traced around the pattern traced it with a zigzag stitch, and then cut around the zigzag stitch. Repeat it for the other side and now I have all the shirred pieces. With right sides of the fabrics facing each other, I'm going to sew it together at the shoulder seam. Once it is sewn together, I'm going to open it up and press. I am now ready to start on the main bodice. I will lay the toile down on top of the fashion fabric, and at the widest width of the fabric, I'm just going to snip the fabric and then tear it along the straight of grain. And I will use this fabric for the neckband and the ruffle. Here you notice that there's still a fold at the top of the fabric. I rotate it to the side and I will cut it along the fold. I will separate the fabric and then fold one piece in half. I laid the back pattern on top. Because I wanted a loose, comfortable fit, I want to utilize the width of this fabric, so I will line up the armhole to the edge of the fabric. I will trim the hem of the blouse, and then cut straight along the top, then the armhole. I will fold this in half again and do a quick snip at the side, and this will be my gathered notches. I will unfold it and lay it flat. I will take the shirred bodice and place a pin at the middle, fold it in half, place a pin at the middle of that fold, and then also place one on the other side. And now this piece is divided into fourths. Here I'm going to put pins at the notches that I had cut earlier. The right sides facing each other, I'm going to match up the notches and pin it together. I did do a base stitch to gather the fabric. After it is pinned, I'm going to sew it straight across. Remove the pins and now the back pieces are sewn together. Now for the front bodice, I am going to lay the pattern on the fold and along the side, I will match it at the hem. Cut the hem and then line up the edge of the armhole to the edge of the fabric. 
Trim at the armhole. Cut along the shoulders and the neck hole. Fold it in half and cut a slit at the fold to create the gathering notches. Cut it along the fold since the opening is going to be on the front. Cut a slit where the front opening ends. Sew it together down the center back and then press it open. Here you'll notice I did a basting stitch so I can do a little gathering. And then with right sides facing each other, I'm going to line up the shoulder seams and stitch. Here I cut one and a half inches width in varying lengths for all the internal seams. I do recommend cutting these strips on the bias. However, I didn't have enough fabric to do that, so these are cut on the straight grain. For example, this one goes across the back bodice. So I'm going to go from underneath and I'm going to lay the strip with the right side of the fabric facing the seam. I will pin it together and then sew it at 3 8 of an inch. Next, I'm going to open it up and then iron it down. Flip it over and I am going to do a double fold, making sure it covers the seam. I will do a quick press just to stabilize it and then take it to the machine and stitch on top following the binding. I also did this for the shoulder seams and along all the internal seams. I did do a catch stitch along the shoulder seams, this way it would lay flat. And now I'm going to use the French seam to sew along the sides. I used the rolled hem along the front bodice, and I have a separate tutorial for this when I had hemmed a chiffon bridesmaid dress. And I'll link that down below. After I finish the rolled hem, I make sure to give it a good press. I am ready to move on to the neckband. I wanted the front flower design to be centered, so I did take the time to play around with it to find the design that I like. Now I'm going to lay out the sewing pattern and then pin and cut. Repeat it for the other half of the neckband. With right sides of the fabric facing each other, stitch it at the center. I'm going to iron it at the center and at the seams, and now I have a neckband. For the inner neckband, I'm just going to fold the fabric in half, lay the fabric on the fold, pin, and cut. Open it up and iron the inner facing to the wrong side. Now I will take the outer neckband and lay it on top and then sew it together at the ends. Now that it is sewn together, I'm going to flip it inside out and give it a good press. I'm going to open up the neckband and fold it down the center and then cut a slit on the top side of the neckband. I will fold it over again and then cut a slit and do the same thing to the other side. I wanted to divide the neckband into fourths so that I can match it up with the ruffles. For the ruffle, I started with a 2 inch width of fabric and 39 inches in length. I will iron the strip of fabric in half. Flip the fabric and then sew the ends together. Snip the corner ends at an angle to avoid bulk. Next, flip it at the corner and roll it out at the corner or use a pointer and it should look like this. Next, I'm going to do a half inch basting stitch along the bottom. Then I'm going to cut slits to divide it into fourths. I am going to pull on the basting thread to start creating the ruffles. And now I have the ruffles for my neckline. I realize I didn't record the spaghetti straps instructionals, so I'm going to use the one I created for my holiday party outfit. So I'm going to cut a one inch strip of fabric on the bias, and I will need two 20 inches in length straps. I will fold it in half and sew it at a 1 fourth inch seam. For these spaghetti straps, I used a Dritz loop turner in which I pushed it through the straps and made sure it hooked and latched onto the end. And then I would hold steady one end as I pulled the loop turner down. And when the other end of the straps come through, I am just going to pull at the strap until it is inside out. I did have to open up a few stitches to sew on the straps. I'm going to line up the bottom edge of the outer neckband to the blouse.
I'm going to pin it all the way around the neck. And then stitch it with a half inch seam. Now that that is sewn together, I am going to attach the ruffle to the top edge of the outer neckband. We'll first match up the ends of the ruffles to the outer neckband. And then I'm going to match up the center of the ruffle to the center of the neckband. And then I'm going to continue matching up the edge of the ruffle to the edge of the outer neckband and pin. Once it is pinned, I'm going to stitch it half an inch. And you can see here it is stitched together. Now I'm going to take the inner neckband and flip it around to the ruffle side. Line up the edge with the edge of the ruffle and the outer neckband, which are already sewn together. Pin it all the way around and then stitch half an inch seam. Now I'm going to fold the inner neckband under, pin, and then hand stitch it all the way around. And now I'm ready for the finishing touches, which I will sew on the binding to the armholes, using the same technique for the inside seams. Finish off the hem, and here I'm tying a bow with the spaghetti straps, and I am complete. So here are the outfits I put together with items in my closet. So which outfit do you like the best, or how would you have styled it? Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you get inspired to create something extraordinary out of the ordinary. If you enjoyed this video, please click like, subscribe, and don't forget to ring the bell for future new videos.